is doing a new thing on earth and he's speaking in a very distinctive way different from what he did in the past for in the great magnitude of darkness that the earth is in today we need and god needs sons and children of light who can really make the difference not everyone who calls themselves a christian has become a child or a son of light and God is beginning to awaken that understanding within us because there are many who have become the light of course but the training of the sons of light is something that God is doing in a much more intensive manner when God starts talking to us and obviously through the light of Jesus Christ he calls us the sons of light and it's very important when the father speaks to us and give us an identity. Today we all call ourselves Christians. If anyone were to ask you what is your religion or what you, what is your belief, you automatically will reply I am a Christian. However, this title or this designation or this name it was given to us by Greece, not by Jesus. But it was actually the Greeks in their desire to mock Paul and Silas that actually called them Christians or little Christs. But Christ always focused in calling us sons of God. So then, the more we hear ourselves that we are sons of God, the more our identity is going to be formed as truly sons of God. But the more we hear ourselves that we are Christians, the more our identity will be formed as Christians. But unfortunately, in this identity of Christians, the spirit of Greece has infiltrated itself deeply. So then, God calls us his sons and daughters. We are called by him as the sons of God and the sons of light as well. Paul says to the Thessalonians that we are not of darkness, but we are of the light and we are of the day. And we said many times that the kingdom of God is exclusive and not inclusive. And by this I mean that in order to enter the kingdom of God, we need to fulfill certain requirements. It's not simply a broad and open door for anyone who claims to say Jesus, Jesus, for them to enter in. The Bible says it that only the violent take the kingdom by force. And nothing worldly and nothing that comes from darkness can enter the kingdom of God. And you may remember that we have been speaking about a word spoken by Enoch. And he says, set all your attention on heaven, ye sons of heaven. Which is obviously parallel to what Paul is saying. If you have been raised with Christ, set your eyes on the things of above. And sometimes it helps to hear things in other words, so it can have a greater impact in us. We have also been teaching that wherever our focus is, there is our consciousness and our level of light. So then, if my focus is in heaven, my consciousness, that is what makes me present, will be also in heaven. So the more I focus on being present in heaven, greater will be my level of light. Your natural mind cannot enter into these dimensions, but your spirit is perfectly capable and equipped to do this. So that every single day we need to enter into his presence and remain in his presence. And once you have entered into this precious presence, you can draw it and pull it with you throughout the rest of the day. So let's go to Luke and it says in chapter 11 verse 33. No one, when he has lit a lamp, put it in a secret place or under a basket, but onto a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. So Jesus is saying here that because we are the light, it is very important to truly be the light of the world, so that those that enter in might see that light. So everyone who comes to Jesus should be able to see our light. So how does this light truly manifest? How is this light? So the lamp of the body is the eye. So when your eye is good, your whole body 
also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. And verse 35 says, Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. So there is something really interesting here, that there is a certain type of light that can actually be darkness. It says that if our eye is good, our whole body will be full of light. But if our eye is bad, our entire body is full of darkness. So if your entire body is full of light, and imagine your whole body just being filled with this light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, all luminous and bright, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. It is very interesting that it says that it is our eye that determines our level of light, which is exactly why I just said a moment ago that if our focus is in heaven, then we will be filled with light. Now, our eye has got to, to do with our perception. And Emerson has spoken a lot about perception and how it forms our reality. So it says here that if our eye, and I will change the word eye to the word perception, if our perception, our way of seeing is good, that would be full of light. But if the way I perceive things, if I am always looking at the negative, if I'm only seeking in that negative perception and everything that gives me fear, then I am opening myself up for my body to be full of darkness. And that is a very dangerous position. Because a body that is full of darkness is going to draw more darkness onto them. And also everything that is in that darkness. Because a body that is full of darkness is going to draw more darkness onto them. And also everything that is in that darkness. So the way we see things will determine the level of light that is in us. It then goes on to say that if our whole body is full of light, having no part dark, and this really draws my attention, because then it goes on to say that our whole being, our whole body will be luminous and full of light, and there is no possibility for darkness to penetrate where it is full of light. So let's go back to the beginning, when everything was created, and we see that the earth was formless and void, and that darkness was covering the face of the deep. So when the light of Christ came, it began reordering all things. The first thing he did was to separate light from darkness. And let's turn uh, to 2 Samuel 22:29. It says, For you are my lamp, O Lord. My God enlightens my darkness. And here, it is very interesting that it says that God enlightens my darkness. So what exactly happened at the beginning? Let's see this. When God brought his light and he separates light from darkness and he starts reordering all things, it is the light of the first day, which is Christ, that enveloped and embraced that empty and dark earth. And having enveloped everything, he creates a being in the image and the likeness of God. In other words, the light came to undo that void that was all darkness. Then, when man falls into sin, the void is once again formed. And wherever there is void, we're going to find darkness covering it. It. So it is that void where the prince of darkness will exercise his rulership and dominion from the beginning. And that void also includes the fear of death. And man begins to enter into a state of absolute rejection. And the first thing that the fallen soul of man absorbs is the rejection of God. And that identity as a son that he originally had, being one with the Father in the beginning, suddenly it separates and he starts to try to find his identity in any other thing to make up for the loss of the Father. Now, fear of death had entered into his heart and also the primary rejection. Now he has to find a way to try to be like God because that is the lie that he believed. For you shall be as God 
when you eat from the fruit. Now, God had made him already in his own image. Why did he ever needed to try to be like God when he was already like God? But now, from this deception that he swallowed fully, that he could be like a God, is what is going to be his life led by. And he starts to form an identity according to this deceptive void. And it is deceptive in nature. Why? Because it came in through deception. And everything that operates within that realm of this void is deception as well. So darkness tries to convince us that indeed it is a reality. And it starts to form my identity based on falsehood. I start basing my identity on what people think of me and people's opinion It's going to become very important to me. And a great majority of people actually lead their lives based on this. And this is a foundation of darkness. Because our identity needs to be based on our Heavenly Father. It is the Father in Heaven who gives us identity. But wherever I start forming my identity based on what other people say that I am worth or I am not worth, and because of this, How many times even the gospel is compromised because of the fear of rejection, even by apostles, by pastors, or by people of God. We start forming our identity by an entire system that was corrupted. And all those principles of darkness are going to completely oppose the kingdom of light. So in this darkness, I'm going to seek not to be rejected And I am going to try to survive all the time within this system because I am afraid of death, because I am afraid that I might lose something. And this is the way millions of people are taught today. You need to have the success of this life. Otherwise, your value is zero. You need to be above and not below because otherwise you're nothing. And In the entire Western society, the search for money and success is very important because much of that identity formed by darkness consists in how much I have or how do I dress. So we start forming our identity according to perceptions that have no substance. And the more we embrace that perception of darkness, the more stressful our lives will become. That fear of rejection becomes one of the greatest weapons of control employed by the enemy to control our souls. And this is where we enter into a great downfall concerning the knowledge of God and the true gospel. So in the moment of the fall, where that void, that deception first set in, together with that separation, we have the forgetfulness of who we originally are. I want you to understand that in that darkness there is a light and that takes the form of darkness. And that light that takes the form of darkness is a false perception of success. Someone that is admired and not rejected. Oh, how I seek to be admired by others. Notice that there is a huge difference between being and seeking after that which is off. I can truly be the light and truly be a servant of God without having to seek after admiration. So then darkness actually provides a false identity. And as long as I continue to focus on nurturing that false identity, I am going to forget who I truly am. Emerson has been speaking about remembering our future, remembering who We truly are. But I am either going to choose to nurture one personality or I am going to nurture the other. So then, everything that separates us from the Father, which is that negative personality, is going to produce a void in our inner being. And this void in our inner being is filled with darkness. So then, separation, that means voids and gaps. And these voids are going to have in them an energy produced by darkness. You remember that we read, lest the light that is in you becomes darkness? And I am going to change the word light to the word energy for a better understanding. Lest it be that the energy that dwells in you be 
energy that is gloomy and that energy that is in you, that dark energy is latent, it's alive, it beats within you. And that's not even the darkness that simply means absence of light, but it is a darkness that holds a substance and that is energized. So if my perception is from this world and is based on this person, on this personality of this world, then I am going to be filled with voids that are full of negative energy. And this negative energy is a propeller and a driving force for actions and decisions. Then we're going to embrace rejection. And we're going to see this void that is the product of rejection. Whenever I feel rejected is because I am seeking other people's approval. And if I need another person's approval is because I have taken my sight off heaven. Because the truth is that we have been accepted in the beloved and we have been made the sons and the daughters of God. So if I am afraid of walking in the truth because I'm going to be rejected and I have to endure all this rejection because of truth, instead of projecting myself towards the true being and personality which is in heaven, filled with light and filled with truth, I will be nurturing this other personality which is a direct product of the void and deception. When Jesus came to the earth to specifically destroy that void and that deception and he will teach us how to be that light. He will change our perception and our manner of seeing things so that we no longer see things according to the principles and the perception of deceitfulness and the void, but we could see things according to the heavenly perception. It says in Matthew 5.39, But I tell you, do not resist the evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek to him also. Now, we clearly see here a complete different type of perception when someone slaps us. And obviously, this while being righteous. But if someone slaps me because they despise my righteousness or simply because they are a wicked person, then I can either choose to feel rejected and hit that person back, or I can connect myself with the Father and turn the other cheek. And this will change my perception. So it says, do not resist an evil person. So when I'm facing this evil person, instead of thinking, oh, what an injustice. Oh, I feel like a victim. I try to find a way to share my light with that person. So Jesus comes and shows us the way on how to conquer that wickedness. He says, instead of resisting that evil person, just put the other cheek. And if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go two miles. Do you see how Jesus operates in the opposite spirit? The light means operating in an opposite spirit than darkness. Instead of, of trying to find my own justice, I see how I can take revenge, to see how can I sue that person, to see how can I protect what is mine. No, 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 no. I don't own anything. Everything that is mine belongs to God. So I don't have to protect it. It is His. Do you want to take it away? Fine. God will return it to me a hundredfold. So I am not subject to darkness, but I am subject to the principles of light. In a study that I have done about St. Clair, the friend and companion of St. Francis of Assisi, St. Clair was once ministering to a queen. I believe it was the queen of Finland. And obviously a queen has all the possessions one can imagine or desire. But this queen was under great affliction and despite all her riches and wealth, she was not doing well. So St. Clair said a tremendous powerful statement to her. She said, My beloved, a man that is dressed is much easier to bring down than a man who is naked. 
because he that is clothed, the other has something to grab him by. Let us see this in a spiritual perspective. The more I am embracing my own possessions, the easier way the devil has to grab a hold of me. But instead of all that attire, all that guard, I am naked and covered with oil like a wrestler, then the enemy tries to grab hold of me, but everything slips away and he simply cannot grab hold of me. Matthew 5, 42 continue saying, Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you do not turn away. And you have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and you shall hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitely use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. So basically, what he is saying is that to truly be the sons of God, we need to operate in that divine personality that is completely opposite to the worldly personality. The more I die to myself and stop trying to save and protect myself, the more I become a son of God. When my eyes start to see the heavenly realities, when my eyes start to see the riches and the wealth that I have access to, it will no longer matter what I have or do not have here in this world. Of course, God wants to prosper us. Yes, he does. Now notice how the focus of the holy type of prosperity actually became the basis for a false type of prosperity. And the church has shifted to focusing on prosperity than becoming the sons of light. Obviously, not everyone. There are exceptions. But I am talking about modern trends. So when the focus is on how much God can prosper me, then I am taking a divine principle and framing it with a personality filled with darkness. Because it's in that personality filled with the darkness of the world that people are seeking to have more and more and how to be successful. But if in my heavenly perception, I start stripping myself off all these things, then the true prosperity of heaven will come over me. And if the heavenly prosperity comes over me into my holy personality, those riches that come upon me will be free from all stress, worry, and concern. But if my eyes are only set on how God is going to bless me financially, little by little I am clothing myself with the garments that the devil can shake me with. Are you following me? Now, the more I am prospered with God's riches, the more I have to set my focus on the heavenly realms. Because riches also have with them a very distractive splendor. So I have always got to place them under my feet. I have to remain in the mindset that what I have here on earth does not belong to me nor is it of any value. And if God grants me any gift of wealth, of fame, or prosperity during my stay here on earth, that has to be always under my feet. Just like Paul said, I have learned to live in every manner. I have learned to live in abundance with everything or with nothing. And this is how God wants us to focus on understanding Him. Because even if we were to say, yeah, I know God because I pray to Him. As long as we live bound to the fear of death and of rejection, there will always be a part of us that remains in that void. And it's in that void that there is an energy of darkness. And without a doubt, it would lead us to make wrong decisions. Come with me to the book of Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. For I am now seeking the approval of man or of God. Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now, if our gospel seeks to please men, we're automatically going to be making wrong decisions 
because sometimes we are compelled in the deed of love to want to please men more than God. Just I love them so much that I don't want to cause them any offense. I love them so much that I don't want them to leave the church. Oh, I'm going to preach a much lighter gospel to keep them from leaving. But Jesus never did that. Jesus truly desired to serve his father. And if that young rich man refused to follow Jesus and give his money to the poor, Jesus didn't sugarcoat the pill for him to swallow it. Jesus said, Bye-bye. God is seeking the children, the sons of light. It is not important whether we are accepted or not accepted. It is not important if we are viewed by a million people or by a few. What truly is important is how much light are we producing in the spiritual spheres. Because perhaps you don't have that many hits on Facebook or in YouTube. But in heaven, your light is radiating over countless millions whose name you don't even know. Let's turn back to Matthew 5, verse 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing? than others. Do not even the gentles do the same. You therefore must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So as long as that personality of void and deception continues to go after success and worries of this world, that we got to take care and watch and protect our name and protect our testimony. Oh, well, they say something negative about us. But Jesus said completely the opposite. Matthew 5, 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This light is a spirit that is completely opposite than darkness. The principles of light seek something completely opposite than the ones of the false light. When you are filled with light and not with darkness, you won't have those voids within you. And then your entire body will be luminous and radiant light. Let's go to Isaiah 52. It says in verse 13, See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. This is God's promise. And it continues saying, Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. Now notice what is happening at the same time in heaven. While Jesus is not seeking to make himself of any reputation. He's not protecting or safeguarding his image at all. Physically, he was entirely disfigured. He was counted with sinners. They turned their faces away from him, discarding him altogether. They had him as stricken, as grieved, as the most vile thing imaginable. And he was crucified and put in the cross as an accursed one, because the Bible clearly says, that it is a curse, he that dies on a cross. But he took on that curse to become a curse for us. While all this is taking place here on earth, at the same time in heaven is being said, Behold, my servant acts wisely. He is high and lifted up, and he is exalted. So they are persecuting you. They are slandering you, saying all kind of evil against you, while these voices of darkness rise up against you, the voice of God shouts and speaks from heaven. He shall be prosperous. He shall be exalted. He shall be exalted and raised on high. Set your eyes on things above and everything that heaven is shining your way. Open your ears to everything that heaven says and shut your ears to everything that is said by darkness because we're going to be hated and persecuted here on earth. The sons of light never live by what darkness says, 
but we live according to what heaven says. So notice what it says in verse 15. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The one that was despised, neglected, and persecuted. The one who was disfigured. So shall he sprinkle and amaze many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him and before him. For that which has not been told they see, and that which they have not heard they will understand. And I prophesy that the sons of light will rise up. And even if darkness shout every type of lie and wickedness against us, and even if they slander your words, we shall amaze the nations and kings will shut their mouths before us for they shall see what has never been told to them and they will understand what they had never heard because there is a generation that is rising up and I pray that this word reverberates and is established in your spirit that your entire body will be luminous and full of light for you have destroyed every void of deception because you have asked God to shine his light in your darkness because you have exchange those voids of fear and the fear of death those vain searches of materialism and you have exchanged them for the true light and the true riches of Christ because you have stripped yourself of the garments of darkness and naked before him you anointed yourselves with the oil of the most high and your body is filled with light and covered with oil and it can never be grasped and torched by darkness hallelujah holy 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 you need to determine in your heart and believe that every word that god has spoken is true you need to determine that all the thoughts that god has about you are continually good anything that we might lose here on earth or anything that is taking away from us is nothing because the thoughts of God about you and towards you are continually good if we trust in and rely on the Father we are indeed free and that can never be taken away from us but we have all things we have all things that pertain to life and to godliness anything that is taken away from us is multiplied upon your lives from heaven that is why i can always be thankful and any suffering that i go through here on earth should be a motive for the greatest joy not seeing those things that are not seen but seeing the invisible ones that are the ones that are real because behind everything that god allows in your lives are riches of his glory that are giving and coming upon your lives and I can see them and I can be grateful for them that is why you must determine to trust in God and stop trusting the system of this world stop trusting in the riches of this world because in this world everything passes away and everything is transformed everything that you gain from eternity shall remain with you eternally father we thank you father raise your sons of light you are not just a christian beloved you are a son of god greece is not what determines you it is the father in heaven who determines who you are